this is the Microscale Organic Synthesis Kit, and you'll be using it for the rest of the year. If we pop it open, you'll see inside there's all sorts of new toys to play with. The point of this video is to show you how to use these in the appropriate way. The big difference between macro scale, which you've been doing up to now, and micro scale is that you never pour any liquids. You're dealing with far too small quantities, so you always use a dropper. Pasteur pipette, you've been given bulbs for this, and the bulb is recyclable. The Pasteur pipette itself can be used several times as long as it's clean. Once it's dirty, you can throw it into the broken glass, the green container. It, you can wash this also with water or with acetone. The micro kits, this is what you'll be using most. This is a five mil conical bottom vial. It also comes in a three mil size. The vials have various ways of being closed. There is a, th there's a thread on the outside and a threaded ring. This one happens to be blue. There are also black ones. There is an O-ring and there is a silicone and Teflon disc. The Teflon is the white, shiny, thin um, layer and the Teflon goes chemical side down. If you're going to use this as a lid, you pop the silicone disc inside the cap like that and then screw it on. And that is now got a lid on it. And this, you can leave chemicals in there indefinitely. If you are connecting it, you'll be using the O-ring. This is rather like Lego. All the joints fit. Different things fit together like this. However, just because they sit together doesn't mean they will sit permanently. So you do need to attach them rather more firmly. This is actually an air condenser, and I'll show you how that fits on. You first of all put the threaded ring over the inner joint, take the O-ring and roll it to just past the ground glass connector, and then fit one into the other. You then screw the threaded ring tight. It will compress the O-ring and form a tight seal. And I can now pick this up by the top part, and it won't fall off. That's what the threaded connector assures me. Now, the vials have a conical shaped bottom because if you're evaporating, this will concentrate your product at the bottom. If you are wanting to stir something, then you need this item here, which is a spin vane. It's much smaller than the spin bar that you've been using up to now, and it goes into this like that, and actually sits on its point and spins on its point. We'll show you that further in a minute. But it fits like that, and you can always fish it out using your tweezers like so. This is not plugged in, but I'll show you how the hot plates function. When you are heating something, rather than putting it directly on there, use a heating block. This is made of aluminum, and the wells in it are the right size to hold various items in your kit. In order to learn how well the hot plate is working, we have a thermometer here. It's calibrated in Celsius, and it sits inside the heating block like this. Make sure that you don't touch the head of the thermometer to the hot plate. You'll get a false reading if that's the case. Pull it out so that the only connection is through the metal bar. It looks like a meat thermometer. That's exactly what it is. Now, if I was going to heat this container, it would sit here inside the heating block and would warm up. Now, you'll get better heat transfer if you use these bridge-shaped blocks and that will increase the contact and the heat transfer from the heater to the block to the liquid inside your glass container here. You are assembling the caps onto a vial. The rule is only one squashy thing at a time. So don't try putting the silicone cap and the O-ring in at the same time. You'll get a leak. If you want a lid, you just use the silicone cap. 
if you want to connect it, then you use the O-ring to seal.